I'm talking about tropospheric ducting. What is it? How can you mitigate it? How can you educate your staff and your public that are calling in complaining about it? All that fun stuff is here in just a moment. But I am Marcus O'Rourke. I am a 20 plus year broadcast engineer. Used to be here in Southern California. And I am right now in San Clemente. I'm here for something else. But this is a perfect opportunity to talk about tropospheric ducting because it is happening right now. The signals that are coming from that mountaintop and from this hilltop and that hilltop and some hilltops over there are all being impacted by tropospheric ducting. What is it? So tropospheric ducting is a weather phenomenon that causes your radio signals to go farther than they normally would. Okay, that sounds like a great thing, right? <sighs> Not exactly. So tropospheric ducting on the station that's transmitting side, okay, great, doesn't really do you any good. But on the station that's getting the interference, for example, when I maintain stations here in Southern California, I had to deal with tropospheric ducting all the time. Uh, very frequently, especially in the summer times, you know, we would get it and people would be frustrated because it sounds like you're getting a pirate signal because it sounds like there's another station that's capturing your radio. So what would happen is I would go online. I would, I have this map that I would look up that's run by some amateur radio operators and it shows, yeah, you'd start seeing these orange blobs, which is basically that they're hearing signals from out farther than they normally would. And so the darker the blobs and the more blobs that are in this area, you would know that tropospheric ducting is happening more severely in that area. So what does that mean? It means that for this, one of the, some of the stations that I would deal with here in Southern California, stations in Mexico would come in and interfere and people would be like, I'm picking up the station that, ha that sounds like this. Or there were some stations in LA, uh, North LA, some LPFMs, that would come in and interfere with the station that I was maintaining here. Angry Audio offers all sorts of gadgets and gizmos from headphone disconnectors to prevent you from ripping the headphone jack right out of the console to mic processors and software to make your streams sound amazing. I want to focus on something specific, the Angry Audio Rave. It's their powerful yet affordable audio console built for radio stations just like yours. The Rave has eight stereo line inputs, up to four microphone inputs, two output mix buses, two mix minus outputs, a monitor feed for your control room, and so much more. The Rave is made of anodized aluminum, silky smooth faders, and tally outputs for your on-air light. Get major market quality at small market prices. Learn more at angryaudio.com. Thank you, Angry Audio, for sponsoring this video. So what is a tropospheric ducting? It's, well, it's temperature inversion. It's when you have a kind of a clear day like this, but you have a massive cold air, and it's just kind of chilling. Get the joke, it's chilling, cold air. It's chilling in this area. And then you have a mass of hot air that comes in and just basically overruns it. And what happens is it creates this layer or this duct where radio signals can kind of get trapped in there and travel farther distances than they normally would. This has been something that's always been an issue. Uh, it's nothing new and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, weather is the weather. But as you understand what it is, when it happens, uh, you could understand, or you could better respond when you have members of the public calling you, contacting you, complaining about interference or uh, complaining about possible pirates. You can go, well, let's look at the map and see now we're experiencing tropospheric ducting. It should clear up when the weather changes a little bit. Also, your staff will probably get frustrated calls as well, and this will help educate them. So that is tropospheric ducting in a nutshell. And it, it's gonna happen to your station unless you live in a place where it doesn't happen, which I don't think there's any place really that it doesn't happen, maybe in like the Arctic. 
But anyways, anywhere we're living here right now, especially in places where there's large bodies of water, Southern California, the Great Lakes, Salt Lake, uh, it happens to us in Denver. So again, it's the, those, those two air masses that are different temperatures kind of running into each other and it creates a nice duct and allows the signal to go out farther. And that doesn't always work in your favor. So that's tropospheric ducting. And that is your lesson for today. <laughs> like I'm a teacher. Uh, anyways, that's something that I had to deal with all the time um, with the stations that we had. When we had the station, uh, when I was maintaining the station that's up at Santiago Peak, which is right over there, uh, when I was maintaining that station, tropospheric ducting would hit us all the time. Like I said, there was a station in Mexico that would come in and clobber some of our areas. A stay up LPFM that was up in LA that would come in and clobber some of our places. And I'm sure that our station did the same to those two stations as well. So, I mean, it, it happens. There's nobody who really comes out on top of that one. While you're here, watch some of the other videos about transmitter sites or about studio sites. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and maybe watch this video. Bye.